Hey, what's up, guys? How you doing? Make some noise. We're going to have a party tonight. Clap it up. Let's do it. Hey, um, so Eric will be out in a second. I'm his warm-up guy here to get you guys pumped up. So I get you pumped up, I got some prizes. You guys want some prizes? Yeah, prizes go to the loudest people. Go loud. Who wants some candy? Who wants some candy? Right over there. Candy over there. Boom, boom, boom. You want some candy? Oh, there you go. Whoa. I did, I, I did steal that from the bookstore, so just settle up with them. I did, I did not pay for that. Uh, more, pre more presents, more gifts. Get loud. Get loud. Get loud. Oh, good one. Here we go. The best gift in the house. Best gift. There you go. That is $4 million online right now. Check that out. Uh, who wants some hand sanitizer? Anyone want some hand sanitizer? I, I don't have any. It's, it's, in the, it's in the hall. Just check out. Wash your hands, guys. Wash your hands. But I'm not here to give stuff out. I am here, boom, to pump y'all up for Eric. He's very excited. It's going to be great. So uh, let's do this. I'm going to count from one to five. At one, I want y'all to get loud, start clapping up. At two, get a little louder. Three, a little louder. Four, a little louder. By the time we hit five, we're super excited. We're making a ton of noise. Y'all ready? Come on, guys. Y'all ready? Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. We'll try it out. We'll try it out. And one. Two. Three. Four. Five. Oh, keep it going. Everyone make some noise for Eric. He's coming out. Make some noise. Keep it going, guys. Keep it. He's, he's on his way. He's on his way out here. Guys. Keep the noise going. We're having a good time. A great time right here. Oh, geez, Louise. Where is Eric? He's got to be here at any time. Hey, guys. How you doing? Hello. Hello. Um, give it up for that warm-up guy. He was absolutely wonderful. Oh, geez. Handsome guy. Good guy. My name is Eric Escobar, and I am here to talk about how to live a more fulfilling life through humor. Um, we're all very stressed these days. We could be stressed because of bills and finances. We could be stressed because of our own unique problems that we have in our life. Uh, we could be stressed because of the last episode of The Bachelor, okay? <laughs> Maddie, Hannah, Barb, who's he going to choose? Let's get a rose out there, all right? Um, the cycle of stress consumes our lives. And one way we can combat that, one way we can fight against that, is through starting every interaction we have in our life with humor. I feel like humor is one of those things that's more than just a punchline or a joke. Uh, comedy, when it boils down to it, is really all about community and connection. It's trying to create something special between two people. It's saying, I like you, I want you to like me, I want to get on the same level, have our own little subculture that's just ours, have our own little inside joke, inside bit that is just ours, and it's special. Um, step one, it starts with your physicality, okay? I'm sure you've walked into a room, seen a bunch of people, and you've been like, that person seems chill, that person seems cool, that person seems scary, um, without even knowing these people. We get reads just off the way people hold themselves, the way they hold their hands, the way they're smiling. Um, living with a sense of humor, starting every interaction with comedy, really starts with the way you hold yourself. In 1988, there was actually a study done. Very, very fascinating. Two groups watched cartoons. The first group, they watched cartoons with a pen in their mouths, but the pen was shaped like this. Kind of shows a smile. Uh, the next group, they actually watched the exact same cartoons, but the pens were like this. More like a frown, more like a sad face. Um, who do you think enjoyed those cartoons more? Like, even now, while you're watching this, if you're smiling, if you're engaged, if you're having a good time, awesome, your physicality is showing that, and we're connected, and it's great. But if you're slouching, if you've got a sad face, if you're, like, putting your arms up, then let's just blame how much you're enjoying this off your, your posture, and not this content, please. That would actually be actually wonderful. So how do we live with a sense of humor? How do we start every interaction with humor? It's very simple. It really boils down to just staying present and trying to find those little moments every day that we can twist out of the mundane into something that's surprising and something that's full of joy and something that makes the people around us smile. If you hear, how are you, every day, it's so easy to just say, fine or good, not even think about it. But what if we caught that moment, stayed in that present moment, and tried to figure a way to twist it or try to figure out a way to make it more special to the people around you. How are you? 6.4 out of 20. Uh, it's such a simple, weird, goofy line, but it shows that there's an attempt to make others happy and show that you want to improve the lives of others. 
a lot of people look at comedy and they see a risk. They see, hey, what if I tell a joke or what if I try to interact with someone in a funny way and they don't like it? It's really embarrassing. Makes a lot of sense, but let's table that for a quick second. Rather, let's look at the reward instead of the risk. The reward is that you're essentially showing someone that you care about them, showing someone that you are taking an action to make their life better so they can be happier, you can be happier, and some people may not feel that for days or weeks or months leading up to that moment. Sure, a joke can be a little embarrassing if it doesn't fly over well, but isn't the reward so much greater than the risk to have someone just have a more fulfilling moment in their life with you just being present and trying to make them happier. Every day we wake up and we kind of start our days on this hill, we're at the top of a hill, and throughout our days, you know, our boss gets mad at us, we get kind of sad, we go down that hill, um, something traumatic happens, we go down that hill more, we get in traffic, we go down the hill, and every day we are focusing on these little things that just make us sad, bring us down, hurt us, it's really upsetting. Through living with a sense of humor, staying present in the moment, trying to find those little things every day to make us happier, to make other people happier, we're no longer on that hill. We live in a valley. And in that valley, we rise up every time an interaction happens that makes us happier, every time there's a moment that we can twist a little bit to be more serendipitous and surprising. Instead of focusing on all the things that are bringing you down that hill, your whole perspective has changed, so now everything that you think of, every interaction that you have is actually building you up, building people around you up. And starting an interaction like that, with that build-up, it creates an openness, it creates a dialogue. It doesn't create, oh, well, I don't like you, you don't like me. It creates a, oh, we're on the same level. Even when um, your amazing warm-up guy, who definitely was not me, came on the stage and started doing little bits, um, it created a more open, fun, silly environment to where now there's more trust, there's more love, there's more connection than there was before. A lot of people talk about how comedians are sad and how comedians can be depressed. Let's look at Robin Williams, let's look at Brody Stevens. Uh, personally for me, I've lost over a dozen friends to depression and mental illness. Um, I can't speak on behalf of them, but what I can say is comedy humor is not a replacement for therapy or seeking help, not at all. But a lot of people are saying, well, these comedians are depressed and they're committing suicide, like, well, what's going on? Comedy doesn't cause depression. But rather, comedy is a tool that makes you feel so connected, so involved, so communal in a situation that it attracts people who may feel lonely. It attracts people who may feel depressed. It attracts people who already have something within them that is so desperate to connect with others. And how is comedy not this beautiful tool to discover to make sure that they're like just part of the crew and feeling loved? Um, they should still seek help. They should still be at 100 so they can give that 100 to the world. But it's easy to understand why that attraction to humor is so present in so many of their lives. In my personal life, I work a lot with incarcerated youth, um, kiddos who didn't feel a lot of community in their lives. And because of that, they try to find that community and love and acceptance through gangs or through horrible people who manipulated them into committing crimes. And they end up in these detention centers, in these juvenile halls. And when I work with them in improv workshops, comedy workshops, it's so hard to see this, this anger and this rage and this attitude of everyone in here is either from a rival gang or they're different from me or I don't like them. When they come together, and they learn to write a joke where they want to connect with someone or they want to find the similarities or they do an improv game where they have to work together to achieve something together. It's fascinating because humor changes their perspective from what are our differences to how are we similar and how can we use those similarities to make each other laugh and have a good time. And it's so beautiful to see that confidence 
within them, that confidence to know you are amazing, you can do something awesome, and you can make other people happy. You're completely of value. And they feel that in that workshop, and they start cracking jokes with another. And it's beautiful, and it's great, and it's super fun. And that is not just for them. That is for the world. If we live with a sense of humor, and we are constantly thinking about how can we make others happy, how can we fulfill ourselves more, we make the world a better place because we're looking for those opportunities to build each other up. A big reason why I feel like this is so important to me is I was blessed with two amazing parents. Uh, my mom and my dad are absolutely incredible, but my dad in particular um, did something that I thought was annoying until I was like 25 years old. <laughs> Every interaction he had, whether it was with a stranger, whether it was with a new teacher, whether it was anyone in the life who we didn't know, anyone in our life he didn't know, he would start by saying the same joke to introduce himself in every situation. I have heard this joke 525,600 times, okay? It's, I'm very tired of the joke, and I hated it for years until I realized every interaction my dad had with new people was joyous, and it was open, and it was fun, and he immediately found a friend in a stranger just by making them laugh. So... To end this, to wrap this up, I actually want to share the joke that I've heard a million times that my dad told to everyone that showed me comedy can make friendships, comedy can create community, comedy can create love. A gentleman walks to a sales office looking for a job, goes to the front desk, and he says, I, 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 would, I would like to, 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 to apply for a job. And they hear him, and they're like, oh, we don't know. They don't want to hire him. So they're like, yo, come back in like six months. We'll see if we have any openings. And he's like, oh, oh, okay. Six months later, on the dot, he comes back. And they're like, oh, geez, he's back. What is he going to do? And he just comes up to them and asks, can I, can I apply for, for a job? And they're a little hesitant, but they say, you know what? Sure, like, what have you been doing the last six months? Oh, well, I, I've, been, I've been knocking doors and sell, selling b books. And they're like, all right, cool, awesome. Um, how many doors did you knock? Oh, I, I knocked, I knocked five, 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 five thousand doors. Okay, five thousand doors. Um, how many books did you actually sell? Oh, I, I, I sold, I sold, I sold five, 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 five thousand, thousand books. And now they're fascinated. They're like, we got to hire this guy. He knocked 5,000 doors, sold 5,000 books. That's a 100% success rate. We're going to hire you, but just first, tell us how you did it. And he goes, well, I just, I just, I just knocked, knocked on the door. And I said, would you, would you, would you like to buy, buy, buy a book? Or, 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 or I can just read it to you. <laughs> That's my time. Thank you so much, guys.